Roku and Disney have been on absolute fire the past week, and we're going to talk about where they might be going this upcoming week. So with the streaming wars, Disney Plus big announcement, as well as Apple just continuing to charge upwards, I think Roku has really been riding the coattails of those two big names uh, since it supports both of their services. So we're going to look at this uh, in terms of supports and resistances as if this is the first time we've looked at the chart uh, and just really map things out and what might happen should start to present itself. So starting on the daily time frame, we're going to mark off our all-time high as usual. That is a point of resistance. So up there at 176.55, our recent low. That comes in here at 116.36. And then our next low, which is around this area, 97.80, you can see we have sort of a zone in here, a nice cupping pattern formed. And then we moved in the upwards direction. Our next recent high was somewhere around here, around 150.97, 151 just about. So that'll mark off our major points that we should keep in mind on any sort of larger move to the upside. So larger move to the upside should put us around the all-time high here. Any move to the downside, we're first checking in at our support point here now that we're above it at 151 uh, rather. Anything lower, we have our level here at 116. And these are sort of larger moves that we're talking about here. Obviously, the price isn't just going to crash down here in one day, although it could if we have a couple of candles that look like this from back here. So let's zoom in to the hour. So you can see on the hourly chart that we're almost just exactly straight up from here. Uh, some nuance points that I do want to bring up occur back in this uh, section of the chart. So that's where we're sort of looking at this area. You can see we had a double bottom, almost triple bottom if you count this tail here. So this seems to me like an important level here at 137.69. You can see it's right where price sort of got hung up too on its move up. This to me indicates that this should offer some sort of support on a move back down through it. You can see our line from up here certainly is in this zone. We could just make it a complete zone by doing something like that. You can see we had resistance here a couple times. So this would be a support zone on any sort of move back down through it between 151 and 148.50 just about based on some round numbers here. Let's break it down even further though. Let's go into the 15 minute. So this will give us a bit of a better idea of what to look out for when the market opens up on Monday. You can see that the price made a nice move up and then it sort of just consolidated throughout the rest of the day, which is completely fine. It's healthy, but it wasn't a complete big move like we had here where price was almost straight up, price was almost straight up and then consolidated towards the end of the day. A lot of this was consolidation here. So what I would mark off is a zone here between 157.95, so 158, just about some of the highs in here um, from you know this consolidation phase and then the lows. And we're going to wait to see what happens if we gap up above them, if we gap down below them, if we get, uh, you know, open in the middle, are we going to break out to the upside? Are we going to break down to the downside? Um, that will sort of determine the direction of Roku earlier on in the morning. I think if we move to the downside, the 50 SMA on the 15 minute chart is certainly starting to move upwards and should offer some support should anything come down in here. I think we also have a level here at 154.11. And then this sort of resistance here coincides with our support here at 156.76. So that's how I would sort of play Roku in the morning. And this is how I would do a top-down analysis of a stock. So if something's really been moving, if there are a lot of eyes on it, then I would pay attention to these levels and do something similar where you start with the daily, move back down into the 30-minute or hourly, and then move down into something even more micro like the 15. We could get into the 5, but that's a little too fine to get into right now. Let's move on to Disney. Alrighty, so we're going to do the exact same thing here. We mark off our all-time high, or our recent high, our recent low, which is sort of marked off here by this gap. We also have a low that we could put in down here. Um, and, you know, this could sort of be a trend line where we have something similar in slope to the 200 SMA, but we're going to ignore that for now. Um, and then we're going to move into some more nuanced levels that we, when we looked left, we see. So first one here is obviously the gap fill-ish area here. So between 136 and 134.22, based on some of these highs in here where we get rejected and then price got rejected and then the gap up happened. Next off, we want to mark off this level. You can see how kind of important this stuff is when we look. We have our resistance here. That's exactly where price got rejected from the open here. So it's no surprise, you know, boom. And then, you know, this doesn't really have too, too much structure around this area, but that's why we're marking it off here instead of, you know, back over here. Although you could argue that we do have some structure here where we had resistance, resistance, resistance. And then when we finally got above it, it acted as support. So I could see that argument, but just for the sake of keeping the chart clean, we're going to leave it off. And then we are going to mark off this level up here just because it's sort of nuanced and in the middle of this big uh, big bodied green candle that we have here. So that's gonna do it for our macro levels. Let's move into the hourly like we did with Roku. 
So on the hourly, you can start to see that we've sort of missed a few levels, a few more nuanced levels, if you will. Uh, so we're sort of pulling back. We have a couple of hourly hammer candles that are forming down here. So this would be a bull flag where we have a nice move that forms the pull of the flag. And then the flag portion is forming here. So you could draw this in as support. I think it's a little early, uh, but we'll just leave it there for now since we do have three hammers here around this level. That's at 144.42. And then you can see some of these more nuanced levels, uh, we sort of missed the high there by a little bit. So keep in mind that this could be potentially at 141 instead of 140, about a dollar off. And then in here, we have some even more nuanced levels, which I would mark off and wouldn't just, you know, um, ignore for the sake of ignoring because of this big bar. If we got back down into it and we see a continued pullback, then this could offer this zone here right around 139. Uh, would certainly offer some bit of support. It offered some structure as resistance on the upside. Once we got through it on any sort of test from the top down, it should certainly act as support. We're going to zoom back down one more time into the 15 minute, see if we can see anything else that we've missed. And of course, as always, not surprising to see, of course, we missed some things. Uh, and as we get more nuanced, you know, we see more and more levels. So 148, just about should offer some resistance on any sort of push back up. You can see from all these touches here, one, two, three, sort of an ascending triangle. I'm surprised it didn't give to the upside given all the momentum in the market, but um, a pullback here, you know, sort of necessary after a crazy, crazy move like this. Also, just keep in mind also the volume. Look at how big the volume was here on such a massive move up. Don't get your hopes up if things start to move in the upwards direction, but the volume isn't there. Uh, I wouldn't expect anything like what we had here on Wednesday to occur again unless the volume really surges in again. And, I, you know, that's very unlikely that you have two of those scenarios in a such a close time frame. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, I think this is sort of our key level here. Um, we are seeing a bit of a double tweezer bottom here, so keep that in mind as support on the downside as well. So that's at 142.56. Uh, and yeah, this is sort of how you go about analyzing from the top down, uh, you know, starting on the daily, working your way back down into the 15 minute and analyzing what might happen on the open here on Monday. Again, very similar to Roku. We have sort of a channeling consolidation here. If it breaks out or gaps up above 145.03. I would imagine that's a bullish signal. And we see a move back up into this uh, sort of resistance around 147. If we break down below 144.42, obviously we have things mapped out now at 142. Uh, yeah, 142.56, got confused there. 142 here, 142 on the cents there. Uh, and then even lower at 144.14, 200 SMA on the 15 minute will start to catch up. So all these things to keep in mind, but I hope this helps and gives you some clarity and structure on what may happen this week on Disney and Roku.